everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and welcome to Friday Fun Live. Yay, we made it to Friday, guys. We've got a lot of fun things to show you today. Uh, I've got some new designs that I've never even mentioned before. And um, let's see, let me make sure, hold on, hold on. Whoop, okay, mute myself on my computer. Uh, I guess the video has played. I just want to say hey to everybody. We've even got a knit crate unboxing today. I have no clue what's in here. I haven't had time to look on social media, so I haven't seen any of the previews. So I'm gonna be as surprised as you <laughs> if you haven't seen any of the previews on social media. Um, and one exciting announcement I just wanted to remind you, if you haven't had a chance to vote for the Carolina Throw um, pattern, it's, it's up for running in Pattern of the Month on the lovecrafts.com store. Um, there's actually a link. It's really hard to find where this is to vote, but I have a link in my video description below. If you have a chance, I'd really appreciate it. Um, we are kind of being left in the dust by another design on there, which is fine. I absolutely, truly wish that person well. Um, it'd be kind of fun to see what it's like to win this, but um, if not, I'm cool with that because um, God is blessing me in so many ways. I'm truly content. Um, but if you get a chance and you want to vote for that in the running, or even vote for one of the other um, really cute projects there. Actually, you got to go there just to see this little unicorn that somebody crocheted, and that's a really cute one. It only has three votes, and I don't understand that. I think it should be winning this. But um, anyway, that link is in the video description below. You have to kind of look past some things and click on the right boxes and all. It's a little, It's a little confusing to get to the voting part, but what you do is you hover the... The cursor or your mouse over the the design and you'll see a heart and if you just click the heart then that's kind of the way you vote once you get to that page anyway um, I want to say hey to you guys I gotta see who's in the chat here um, we have Alana thank you for joining us and Jan hey Jan thanks for joining me today and Judy um, Judy and I are on the same page. We're rocking the same shirt today. She said she's wearing wearing the the um, I crocheted for I am shirt. So thanks for your support there, Judy. Um, glad you could join us today. And let's see, we have Swati. Hey, Swati from sunny LA. And um, gosh, a lot of people just a lot of things just popped in here. We have Esther. Hey, Esther. Thank you for moderating from up north your way. And um, Barbara, it's good to have you back after two weeks. And let's see, um, Jacqueline says that it's um, good morning from sunny somewhere, I guess. Um, I'm glad you have sun. Uh, we are kind of partly cloudy here, expecting a lot of rain, but we had a lot of sun yesterday. It was great. And we have Mary. She says it's 5 p.m. here in England. Mary, thanks for joining us. Wow. Um, hope things are going well with you in the U.K. there. Uh, love, love, love visiting your your country this past um, this past fall. Little did I know it would be the last trip I would take for a long, long time. Um, it was a great trip though. And Judy, um, she said Kathy um, says that we're triplets with bodies. <laughs> Thanks for the, your support, Judy. I guess you got your rock and your crochet shirt too. Um, we have Brett's mom in the chat. She says hope everyone is having a great day. I do too. This is this is a time to be positive and to just be thankful. You know, lots of things to fuss about, but we're not here to fuss. We're here to we're here to have a good time, right? Um, we have Angie Gabriella. She says, "Good afternoon from is it Cal is it Calvary? I can't Cal Calvary. Uh, is that if it's Calvary Cal? Anyway, welcome. I'm sorry. F forgive my ignorance there, uh, Gabriella." Um, that is so cool that you could join us. And Charlotte and um, Jacqueline says, um, just from California, received my first knit crate. I hope you liked it. You probably know what's in this box already. I don't. Actually, um, because of you know living in different places, the, the box was shipped to my home in Maryland. Um, my husband and daughter are visiting with me today. Yay! My son is still home, though, in Maryland since he has a job. He's employed, praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. Um, and, and just, you know, within a couple months really um, out of college to have a job is pretty incredible, especially having a job in your field. So we definitely, um, we have other children who are definitely not in that situation years out from graduation. So we are really rejoicing with him. 
he's he's having a good time um, making some money and, and enjoying not being a student for a while although he is studying some other things but anyway studying it for fun not because he has to um, let's see we have Jan, she says, hi, buddy. I'm cool now. My power came back on yesterday at 5 p.m. Oh, God bless you, Jan. She's been without power. I guess she had that derecho storm or something move through her area and had to go through several days without power. Um, but she did say she had water, which is good. I know when, when I'm at home in Maryland, if we lose power, we lose our well pump, which means we don't have water. So I'm really glad that you guys are back online and, and rocking that electricity. Uh, we truly are blessed living here in the States. Um, let's see. Brett's mom says that she was, I was out in your neck of the woods on Wednesday. Oh, but it was for a funeral. Sorry to hear that, Brett's mom. Um, but she reminds me, guys, thank you so much for your care and your prayers and your encouraging comments for Bobby. I don't know that, I don't see Bobby in the, in the chat yet. Bobby, if you're out there, please let us know. Um, but... I uh, maybe ugh, it's been a hard week for that kid. Um, he's he lost his mom this week, and um, so I mean went through the funeral a couple days ago. So thank you guys for caring for him. Um, I, I I just posted something in the chat, no fancy pictures or anything on my Facebook page, and there must have been I don't know 65, 70 comments to encourage him. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a testimony to who you guys are, and and that is just so much more important than anything I could say here regarding yarn, I promise you. So so thank you for your care, that's what real people do, and um, just thank you, I can't can't say enough, I just trust that the Lord will, you know, bless you for, you know, for the good that's that's there that, that you all are acting upon, but anyway. Um, Rochelle says it's her first time, well great, I'm so glad you could join us. And um, let's see, uh, Bramble Bear, she says, hello from sunny Maine. Yay. Oh, I love Maine. Still remember going up to Cadillac Mountain and just seeing the view from up there. Beautiful, beautiful place. Um, love everything about that state. Um, we have Kimberly. Happy Friday from Seattle. Thank you for joining us, Kimberly. I hope you all are doing well. I guess it's good morning to you since you're probably out there uh, probably having brunch by now, 10 o'clock. Um, Jan says, I'm an hour earlier than the East Coast in Illinois. Yep, you're there in Central Time. I was just actually talking with somebody from, uh, not too far from you, from um, the out, outside the Chicago area. Somebody with the organization called Celtic that helps to organize the Crochet Guild of America. And um, I've got my little studio moved downstairs here because I'm getting ready on Monday to teach the live virtual classes on CGOA. I'm going to be teaching those two classes. Remember I told you about the I Love Crochet Cables and um, Beginning Knitting for Crocheters. The classes have officially closed. We, do, we did meet our minimums, yay. We actually went above that. So we will have the classes. They will go live on Monday. It's going to be for one hour a day over a three-day period. Um, and I'm not going to get into all the time zones and the times because I could tell you what it is um, going to be for me Eastern. I'll just tell you that the crochet, I love crochet cables classes starts at noon Eastern time. The, um, the knitting, beginning knitting for crocheters teaching continental style knitting starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And um, even though the classes are closed, Heather did tell me that if you send, uh, if you still want to join these, these are the, the, uh, again, through the Crochet Guild of America. Um, they might be able to get you added in if you want to. This is a for pay class, this is not a free thing. Um, and, and a lot of the money that you'll be paying does go to help support the Crochet Guild of America. I mean, some of it goes to pay the teacher, me, but um, all of it does not. And most of it actually goes to help support the Crochet Guild of America trying to keep the organization alive and well. As you know, um, the conference in the live format that was supposed to happen in New Orleans this year was canceled due to the pandemic. And um, so that's really their, their main financial money generator for the year. Um, and, and it's actually one of the, the best parts of being a part of CGOA is, is going to the conferences and being able to meet all these people that we talk to online and and hear about but we get to take classes with them and um, do all I, that's just the tip of the iceberg classes are not everything I mean um, 
I don't want to launch into a CGOA discussion, but just being there with other like-minded people is incredible. Um, and it's, it, it's an investment. Um, I was never one to travel far and wide for things like this. I was a stay at home mom for many years, you know, IE no income. <laughs> so I didn't do a lot of that, but, but, um, I, I found a way uh, with my husband's blessings to do that about 10 years ago was able to stay with relatives in a nearby town and um, make it work. And after that, I was, pun intended, I was hooked, okay? So it is a worthy time, mental health wise, just enjoyment wise, building your craft in your heart, um, blessing others, it, it's, it's a great, great organization, it, in my opinion, not a perfect organization. Um, it has people in it. Whenever you have humans, you're gonna get stuff, you know that, but, um, that aside, it's, I think it's still worth, 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 worth the time. But, but anyway, um, so those classes start Monday, start Monday, and it'll be held Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one hour each time. And if you still want to sign up, um, I can't just, I can't guarantee that there's still going to be room, but you can email Heather at crochet.org or just, um, go to crochet.org and contact them and ask for Heather. And um, if you send them an email and say, I really want to join this class, even though it's closed, um, see what they'll tell you, if that's something that's interesting to you. But but as the uh, registration did close like yesterday officially. So anyway, I am really excited about gearing up for that. It'll be my first time teaching a knitting class like this and first time teaching on Zoom of any kind, but I think it's gonna go well. We did a test run today, so I think, you know, I think I think we got the glitches uh, taken care of, fingers and toes crossed, of course. So anyway, um, let's see, who else do we have in the chat? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Lori says, good morning from Appleton, Wisconsin. Beautiful sunny Friday. That's great. I would like to hear sunny days. And we have Rebecca and Donna G. And let's see, Nancy from Wisconsin. Thank you, ladies, for joining us today. And... Um, Let's see, Mary says, glad you enjoyed your trip to England. Oh, yes, 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 it was great. Um, Any time away with my husband is wonderful, <laughs> but um, being able to go to a place that neither of us have been um, was even was extra special. Uh, my husband has traveled for many years with his work and has seen many places that I'll never see, and I'm okay with that. I was home changing the diapers and caring for the kids, and you know how that goes, but... Um, He's seen many places, so for him to, for us to go to a place together um, that he's never been to is, is really cool, and we get to discover it together, and England was that for us, and um, saw a lot of really cool things, and would love to go back again. It really did feel like a second home, just kind of like going to Australia for me. Um, it just felt like I could live here. I mean, the people were great. Um, I could say that about other places too, but um, especially since I think England and Australia, they speak the language that I understand, and, and that that's huge. Um, so anyway, loved, love visiting you guys in these faraway places. Ah, we have um, Diane. She says she's listening from work, and we have Katrina. And um, Shirley says, good afternoon from Indiana. Welcome, Shirley. Um, and Jan says, the only part of having no power is that I couldn't see what I was doing. Ah, oh, that would be so hard and dangerous too, I guess, because you can't see very well in the dark. Um, I'm just glad, Jan, I'm glad that it didn't happen um, in cold weather. Remember years ago, Hurricane Sandy came up the East Coast late in the fall and um, hit New York pretty bad. And uh, I'm just really glad that it's hit you guys in a good time of the year and you're not having to worry about your heat um so that that is that is one thing i'm glad for um we have jane from massachusetts hey jane uh love your 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 um state used to live there that was my honeymoon year living in uh, andover massachusetts uh, my husband worked downtown at um boston or mass general in downtown boston I'm doing some of his postdoc down there years and years ago, back not back in 1988. Um, it's been a while. Um, we have is it Smita? She says attending this kind first time. Thank you and thank you so much for your kind words there, Smita. That is so sweet of you. And we have is it Texarkana, Arkansas, Christy. Thank you for joining us. Wow, 
I'd love to go to Arkansas. Um, Suzanne says, can someone tell me how much the online course is? Okay, I can tell you that, Suzanne. Hold on to your seat. It's not cheap. Um, it's $75 for the three-hour class. It's um, one hour over the three-day period. Um, this is usually what the classes cost at a usual CGOA conference. So I know it's an investment. Um, this is not for bargain seekers. Uh, for those of you looking for only free patterns, <laughs> this is not a free pattern. This is not a free class. Um, but like I said, all of that money does not go to me. A lot, The bulk of it actually goes to the CGOA organization to help keep it alive, pay for the administration throughout the year, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's for members of CGOA. If you're not a member, I highly recommend you join before you sign up for the class. It'll the the difference in the price you pay for the class for non-members will actually pay for your membership. So, um, just just a thought. But anyway, um, not a cheap investment. But um, hopefully, I am going to do everything I can on my end to make it um, worth every penny. I promise. Um, doing everything I can to, to make sure that everybody's satisfied. And you know that even if everything doesn't, you know, all the questions aren't answered during the class, you, you know how to contact me and I will uh, be paying special attention to the emails coming from the class for the next week so that I make sure everybody's questions are answered and everybody's happy. Okay, um, I just try to try to go the extra mile where I can. Um, hey, Donya, she says, finally got to see you. Hey, thanks for joining us live. And, um, and Smita says, started with crochet after long, okay, in this lockdown. Yeah, somebody posted something online about what do you, you know, what can you do during the lockdown? And people had all these ideas and nobody mentioned crafts. And I said, learn to crochet. I'll help you. <laughs> it's easy. Uh, well, if you got the, the gumption to, you know, to bear with the learning curve, you can, I, I'm convinced, just about learn anything as long as you give yourself enough time. Um, and Jan says, yes, I'm thankful for that too. This is Jan, the one who lost her power, um, says, and God cooled the weather to the low eighties. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Uh, that is, that is so good. Um, and Mary says, um, we managed to do a coast to coast 21 day train ride from New York to San Francisco in 2008. Whoa. 21 days on a train. I admire you, Mary. I've done the opposite. I've gone from from South. This is when I was in college, and they had this deal where you can go anywhere for like uh, like a thirty day period um, within a certain range. And I think I was in college, and I went from South Carolina. I went all the way to Cincinnati, but you had to go up through Washington, then Cincinnati, and then from Cincinnati back to Washington, all the way down to South Florida to visit my family, and then back to South Carolina. After that, I was done with trains for a while. Um, trains are great, but I just really like showering a little more often than what they provide. But I'm glad you had a great trip. I, I met actually some people on the trip going from you know, east to west um, who actually come from the west. I guess I was going from west to back east. They were coming from California and going all the way to DC. They might've been going to New York too, I don't know. But I remember seeing them. They were they were having a good time. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I've got a question in French. I'm gonna. I think that's French. I'm gonna have to look that one up on on uh, Google Translate, and I will get back to you. But if you wanted to repost your um, question in the in the video after the video renders then I can actually answer you back directly on that. Thank you for, for participating. Forgive me for my lack of, of um, linguistics here. Um, Jan says, if these classes were offered just a week later, I'd be there. One of the joys of retirement is getting paid once a month, still adjusting to that. Oh, I feel your pain there, Jan. Um, with my publishers, let me sit, sit down a second. With my publishers who publish the books, which I promise you is not my main source of income because it's really such a small amount. But um, I get paid every six months, once every six months, if there's a paycheck to be paid. So, And I never know what that's going to be, if it's going to be a couple hundred dollars or if it's going to be nothing. <laughs> and that does happen sometimes. So yeah, that, that, is, that is tricky, um, trying to budget when you don't know what to budget for. Um, 
Cole Parker says, put my dual and delight and time out. We'll get back to it after a bit. Yeah, hope that that's, um, I don't have a video on that one. That was one of my first books that I did before the days of YouTube videos. And, um, before I even knew how to do that. And I would have to kind of get my publisher's permission even on doing that. But, you know, I might go ahead and take a look at that. It, that would be a long video because that's, that's a long project. It has a lot of different stitches. It's definitely an intermediate. But hopefully the, st the stitch videos that I have on my channel, if you look up, um, go to YouTube, go to Bonnie Bay Crochet channel. And um, if you click on, there's a, a playlist. Hit, click on playlist and go to the playlist that has a picture of the top part of the book of Contemporary Celtic Crochet. And if you click on that, there is a list of all the videos or all the stitches that I use in all those designs right there in a list. So you can access the individual stitch videos even though I'm not actually crocheting the design for you. The only thing that's not included is the pineapple. Um, that is not included um, in that stitch list. Um, but there is a stitch diagram of that in the book. I think that's the only stitch diagram in that particular book that I'm that I'm remembering. Um, oh, thank you, Smetta. She says she likes my T-shirt. Um, yeah, this this is so much fun. My son-in-law um, Brian uh, actually actually designed the hook for me, and we put this together one night when he and Becky were in town. And if you don't know who Brian is, if you go to my channel and look up. Um, teaching a beginner how to crochet. There are two videos up there where I actually taught him how to crochet. There's strange sound outside, sorry. Um, I taught him how to crochet, sort of, and just to kind of demonstrate how awkward and difficult it truly is to teach a true beginner. And I think you'll really like it. He's he's quite a, quite a charming young man, and uh, probably why my daughter married him. Um, and uh, very very enthusiastic, uh, very funny to watch. So maybe you can you know, ch check those out um, if you're looking to see how much fun it could be to teach an absolute beginner. Um, I love loopy crochet and treasures said I rode a train from Tuscaloosa to Birmingham. Wow. And I'm trying to think, I'm not sure how the distance is on that, but I hope you enjoy that one. Um, I kind of gave up trains a while after my New York, to Washington trip back in January. Didn't have such a good experience, but at Penn Station, but that's beside the point. Uh, hopefully that has been resolved, but anyway. Um, otherwise, it was actually a pretty good trip, but um, anyway. Customer service sometimes can make or break it for you, if you know what I mean. Um, they kind of broke it for me that day. <laughs> anyway, um, we have Suzanne, she says bonjour. Yes, um, and Judy says, so what is the name of the guild? Okay, sorry, Judy. It's Crochet Guild of America. The website is crochet.org. Cro the word crochet.org will get you there. Or if you just Google Crochet Guild of America, um, it'll probably be one of the top two hits that you get there. Um, if you just type in CGOA in the, you know, in the, um, search thing, you're going to get some things that are not going to be crochet. So just type in, you know, the whole word or, or just crochet guild. Um, we have Miss B crochet corner. Um, she says, hi, it's from, uh, from Linda in the UK. Hey, Linda, thank you for joining us today. And, um, we have Joanne from Toronto, Ontario. Hey, you guys got all the hockey players near you, don't you? forget what town you they're all in I know all the hockey teams are playing now my my guys have been in withdrawal for so long from all sports they've been watching hockey non-stop since they've been been down here it's, well in the evenings when they can get the channel it's kind of funny to watch them they're watching everybody because they just I think are so starved for it um, we have Gail she says hello yarn people from Sebastian Florida my home state yay Gail thanks for joining us and um, Hope says, we take a train every year from Detroit to Denver. Oh, that would be great. Love it in private sleepers, best way to travel. I would love to try that. I love, I would love to go to Denver again. Next year, CGOA in July, scheduled for Denver, Colorado, my friends. I ah, can't wait to get there. Um, and 
that reminds me. I wanted to tell you something. My daughter-in-law and son gave me. They gave me the herb, my early Christmas present already. Yeah, isn't that great? And um, there's a guy named Rick Schuler, who is an impersonator of one of my all-time favorites, John Denver. And he lives out west. I don't know if he lives in Colorado. I think it might be Arizona. But he's giving an online concert. Um, you have to buy a ticket. And the tickets aren't cheap. It's almost as much as my crochet class. And um, But the thing is, it goes to help support him. He had a 200-city tour lined up in January before COVID hit. And, and so this man is, is totally out of work right now. So uh, I am just really glad that my, my daughter-in-law and son were able to bless me in that way. I saw some of his videos online and I told them, I said, don't tell my husband that I think I'm in love, but <laughs> don't tell anybody I said that. I'm just, just joking, but um, I, I just love listening to John Denver music. I've actually written even some parody songs using his songs um, and played them at a conference. So I mean, really into John Denver. Um, but this guy looks like John Denver. He sounds like John Denver. And I know you younger folks have no idea who I'm talking about, and that's okay. Um, Google or, or go to YouTube and look up Rick Schuler and listen to some, or even look up John Denver. I mean, um, country, kind of a, I don't know, country folk singer, um, lots and lots of acoustic guitar. I love acoustic guitar. I have, play acoustic guitar when I can, and I just can't get enough of that sound. But anyway... Um, check check him out, Rick Schuler, S C H U L E R, and um, look at some of his videos. He he sounds just like De John Denver, mannerisms, blonde hair, everything, and and he's uh, a, I think about my age or maybe a little bit older, maybe around sixty now. So um, probably about what John Denver would be if he was still with us. So anyway, that was just a little blessing I wanted to tell you about, and I'm going to talk about crochet. I promise. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that. Um, oh, thank you, Esther. She translated the, um, the, the, um, that French comment. Um, she says, I love what you do and especially the Afghan crochet is beautiful. I intend to achieve one, even if I, I guess don't understand it. That's great. Well, thank you for doing that for me, Esther. And thank you for, you know, our, our French friend there. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for um, commenting. Esther says, I try to follow the gestures. Thank you. Yeah, from Algeria. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I guess that person was from Algeria. Very cool. Um, let's see. They have Irma. It says, hi, Bonnie and everyone. This is my first time from Biglerville, Pennsylvania. God bless you all. Thank you. Well, thank you, Irma. That's a great name. You know that? That is a great name. I love that name. Um, and we have Barbara, she's saying hey to her friend Tracy. And um, yeah, let's see, Christine Jones is with us from Alaska. And we have Connie Joyner. And Johnny's in the chat, she says, Bonnie, we need a man's cable sweater one of these days. Johnny, I'm working on something for you, for all of us that can go either way. I'm actually, I'll go ahead and spill the beans because you don't know what it looks like yet. I'm actually working on a cabled pullover. I, I, I'm just to the point of swatching it now. I've swatched it. I will tell you the yarn I'm going to use, I'm going to be using Barocco Vintage DK, okay, in an Aran color, an all, you know, like an off-white uh, off kind of a color. Um, I'm loving this yarn, by the way. It does have acrylic. It's like a 50% acrylic wool, but... Um, Man, I, I don't think I've worked with this yarn in a long, long, I haven't worked with this long in a long, long time. And um, I'm really enjoying the swatching. It's really going to be a good fit for this design. So um, I got your back, Johnny. Uh, it's coming. It's just going to take a while. I'm not sure where you're going to wear this thing in South Florida. <laughs> you're going to have to come visit Washington, D.C., come visit us in the wintertime to wear it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're working on that. And you're smart enough you could probably even make this into a cardigan if you wanted to um esther says that she, she loves john denver also heard of rick something yeah rick schuler esther rick schuler and and if you guys sign up for the concert tell rick i sent you tell him bonnie said hey 
and can't wait to meet him in person. As um, my um, daughter-in-law, Christy, says she wants to introduce me to this guy. I think he was actually, um, he's a he's a believer. He's he's a strong Christian, and he actually was on the the dig in Israel that my daughter-in-law went on a few years back. I guess it's been about three and a half years ago, three and a half, four years ago, that dig that, it, that happened over in Israel. I don't know if you heard about it. They, they found the Dead Sea Scroll. And my daughter-in-law got to be on that dig. And um, so he was also there helping with that particular uh, project at that time. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. I really hope to meet this person. And, and um, I'm really looking forward to the concert. And let's see. Uh, um, Jan says, oh, Bonnie, are you, okay, do, do a pineapple, okay, what am I going to do a pineapple tutorial? I have such a hard time with this stitch. You know what? That's an idea. I never even thought about that. Um, I'll have to make a note to myself and see if I can do that. You know what? Uh, I can't make any promises, but I may just have to break down and do that design at some point. Um, it's just that the dilemma is it takes a long time to do that particular design and I would have to do it from start to finish and I don't have that design anymore. I actually gave that as a special gift to my aunt in Arizona last time I was there. Um, but I'll think about the pineapple tutorial. That actually might be a good thing to do. I could probably whip that one out for you guys. Um, let's see, we have... Uh, Okay, um, oh, Jane says, I just received the Mandela Style Throws to Crochet. That's a magazine, that's a newsstand edition that's out there. And she says, I love, love, love your new pattern, Celtic Mandela Throw, yay. She says, it is gorgeous. After I finish my granddaughter's wedding, Afghan, that'll be next. Well, I don't even, you know what, guys? Um, I don't even have that Afghan to show you because that's still Annie still has that. But let me show you a picture on my computer. Okay, if, if this will work. This is the afghan she's talking about. Okay. It's called the Celtic Mandala Throw. Let's see if I can get it any closer. I'm not, I'm not sure how that's going to broadcast. Okay. Um, so that's the new design. I actually just released the pattern this week. So the pattern, the pattern is in my Lovecraft store. Um, it's, it's, it's one of these new arrangements where Annie's and the designer, we, we kind of both have the copyright on this. It's kind of a new arrangement um, that we are trying out, which is really great because they you can buy the pattern in the magazine if you want the magazine. I can't wait to get my copy of the magazine. Um, and let me give you a heads up. Next week, if the U.S. Post, Postal Service um, is faithful <laughs> and delivers to delivers these, they're in the mail to me. So I'm going to have a few, I think three copies of this magazine to give away next week. I've got something else to give away this week. So hang in there. If you guys um, saw my post about a giveaway, I do have giveaways for today. And I'm going to do that shortly um you know i like to drag it out a little bit but but anyway um just to also want to let you know about the celtic mandala throw the tutorial the video tutorial is in the pattern so if you already purchased the pattern and if some of you have um you can access the video now however on monday this video goes part one goes live on my youtube channel so hang on on monday this this is going live and and this is an afghan that that i used it uses acrylic yarn you can use whatever yarn you want of course but um i i think you'll find the yarn very nice i used premier yarns that's the yarn that they wanted me to use of course you can use premier everyday um acrylic it's a worsted weight um i think it was 13 scans but check the yardage on the video and in the pattern i mean this would also be a good candidate for um you know paint box yarn from lovecrafts um you know or, or your favorite you know whatever you like to use i know some of you like to use the one pounder by caron um 
maybe even Red Heart Super Saver, any of those yarns would work for this. It's, it's just an acrylic afghan, um, but it's worked in the round or in the square, I guess you could say, going around. Um, some some in interesting new techniques for getting you around the corners using these stitches, so I highly recommend using the video. I already got a comment from somebody saying, oh, there's a mistake because it says this and that, and I was like, well, actually, did you look at the video because the video will clear up your question. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, follow the videos on, on this one in particular. I, many of you know these stitches already. Um, so it's just working them in a different way. And it's kind of fun. It's just kind of fun to see this thing grow. And um, it did take me a few tries to get it right, just to let you know. I was uh, singing out the song, Ripping Out is Hard to Do, over and over uh, before I got the technique down for how I wanted it to be because I wanted it to look just right for you guys. Um, let me go back to my screen here. I've been getting behind again. Um, thanks for the prompt on that, Jan. Um, oh, yeah, Suzanne says, yeah, Suzanne, thank you for the reminder. If you guys are here for the first time, um, please hit subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up if you're liking what you're seeing. And um, definitely hit that notification bell. I know you all probably get tired of hearing me say all that, but, um, but that's the best way to get notifications. And... Um, it helps me, you know, helps me to grow. It helps the awareness of the video of, you know, of, of a positive crochet community to, you know, to go further. And we definitely want that. We want it to kind of cover up all this negativity out there, right? Um, let people know there's reason for hope. Um, and thank you, Lisa, for your kind comment from Texas. Um, ah, Sandra says she loves John Denver. Yay, me and you, Sandra. Um, and Shirley wants to know, how did you start getting into your patterns in crochet? Ah, that's a good question, Shirley. Um, long story, but I do have kind of a, a short story of that on my on my uh, BonnieBayCrochet.com page, on my homepage if you wanted to read through it. But basically, after probably 18 to 20 years of crocheting and looking for patterns, actually it's more than that, looking for patterns that I really wanted to do but didn't really find a lot, um, I decided that, you know, I should try some new things and one day sitting down um, to do another uh, crochet afghan that I had done many times before for people's gifts and stuff like that, my daughter looked at me in disgust and basically said, Mom, you can do that one again. Do something different. Do something of your own. And, um, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I could try that. And, and at that, that day, I actually started swatching and um, playing around with what I could do with the double crochets and the treble crochets. And, and believe it or not, I came up with the Celtic weave stitch at that particular time. And I know a lot of people, some people out there I've met, oh, I don't believe that, that. I've, I've seen that online. Well, I kind of came up with that. I mean, it, and this was um, probably going back 12, 13 years ago. Um, the first time that stitch was ever in publication was... Um, back in 2010 in the Aaron Afghans to Crochet by Leisure Arts. That booklet is uh, no longer printed in the physical form, but it's available as a PDF. And it was only after that that people started imitating that stitch on their YouTube videos. I promise. I mean, I did not learn that from anybody. That That's kind of how that started. And I was, I was totally floored that Leisure Arts would want to publish my work. I had like five original afghans and I took these pictures with this really cheap little point and shoot camera and I'm a photographer. I, I like the big, I mean, I like the real lens. I'm looking at my camera over here. I mean, I like to use, you know, a real S, you know, single lens reflex and all that stuff. I'm not saying that right. But um, I've always, in fact, I never even had a camera that had the automatic setting um, until I brought, bought my digital camera. Before then, I was using one where I would even have to set the f-stop and aperture setting and all that stuff, and and you know, light using a light meter in the camera because um, I just really got into that. So using this little point and shoot camera, just like these are really terrible pictures, but I that's all I had. So um, I sent them in somehow, figured out how to get them into an email, and um, sent them in. And they, they, they contacted me back saying they wanted to sign a, wanted me to sign a contract for a leaflet. And I'm like, sweet. I, I was flabbergasted. Again, was a home, stay-at-home mom, homeschool mom, and 
uh, no income to speak of. So I thought, oh, that is really cool. So, um, and, and the reason I even sent those in is because somebody at the county fair wanted to know where I got the pattern from. And I said, well, it's kind of my pattern. So, and I'm not really wanting to give it to anybody until I get a copyright on it. And I was trying to figure out how do I get this copyrighted? And, and so anyway, so that, that's kind of what happened with Leisure Arts. And then within, I thought, wow, that, that was easy. And so the next month I did some hats and scarves and, and sent the pictures of that with my daughter standing in there in the kitchen with wearing them. Both of my daughters, I, you know, uh, got them into being my models. Again, pictures were eh, not that great. Um, and when I look at the pictures now, I'm like, golly, what in the world did they see in these? But um, they gave me another contract for the noggins and necks. And, and then after that, I didn't get any contracts with them for a long, long time, but um, that's kind of how it got started. And I, I'd like to think that since then, I've gotten a lot better at writing the patterns. And, and, um, and from that point on, I really, really wanted to start, I really wanted to have the videos for the instruction on YouTube just for the stitches. And that was before YouTube was really anything. And um, so my son helped me to get some, uh, some videos uploaded. And these are like standard definition. They're not high definition or anything. And those videos are still on my channel. They're, they're pretty awful. <laughs> I mean, compared to, I think, what's, what I'm doing now because I have a, a real, more of a real studio to work. Back then it was just, the backdrop was the, the quilt on my bed. and. You know, we were really winging it, but um, but I just really wanted people to be able to crochet these stitches, um, and I knew that a lot of people wouldn't be able to if they didn't have a video, if they didn't have the visuals to follow along. So anyway, lots of talking again. Sorry, thanks for for being patient with me, um, but that's kind of how it happened, Shirley. I, I like to think it was just the grace of God, and you know, the timing was just right, and you know, things have just fallen into place. Um, and I know that the Lord has played a big part in directing um, each step. It's been a long process, um, but it's been a good one. Oh, Jacqueline says, um, okay, going back to the John Denver discussion, he's how I learned to play acoustic guitar. That's fantastic. Jacqueline, I would love to get together with you sometime. Um, if you ever go to a conference, um, I will try to bring my guitar and I want you to play guitar and I'll bring my flute or something and we'll do some music together. Um, and I got another new song coming out soon this weekend. We'll have another another song up. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have another channel. It's, it's in its infancy. It's very beginning. Only three videos. We're going to have our fourth video hopefully up this weekend. Um, the channel is called Sapphire Freeway. And Sapphire is spelled S-A-P-P-H-I-R-E Freeway. And um, it's just an instrumental music channel. Um, it's going to be mostly worship music, uh, but we're going to be bringing out a new song. Um, Roger um, sent it to me this morning. He's um, So this is kind of like pandemic music. Um, I'm recording it down here in South Carolina uh, from my end. And he's, he records and mixes it up in Gaithersburg, Maryland, actually Germantown, Maryland, on his end. And, um, and if you guys want to check out Roger Hooper, um, his music channel is pretty amazing. He does a lot of background um, music for, for he, he does um, composition for uh, video games, um, movies, um, ads, commercials, whatever. He does a lot of different things and a lot of it is original composition. This guy is really, really good. So anyway, if, check out Roger Hooper, his, his music channel and, and Sapphire Freeway if you get a chance to. And a new song is coming this weekend. So if you want to subscribe to that, you'll get the notification. Again, it's all free. And there actually are no commercials on that channel yet. We're about uh, about 3,900 hours away from being able to monetize. But it is my hope to monetize that channel too. So that this will help Roger and his lovely bride, Becky, um, you know, kind of make a living. It's really tough for musicians these days. And... I uh, really want to see him to be able to help. Oh, Liz, I'm so jealous. Liz says that she has seen John Denver in concert. I'm going to try not to covet that, Liz. Wow, that is so great. Uh, we just got a bunch of comments in here. Uh, where did it go? I'm sorry, guys. You know how how slow I am. Uh, okay, there are a lot of questions here that I am missing. 
Let's see. I am way behind, guys. I am so sorry. Okay, Liz says, I've seen John Denver in concert in the Wildlife Tour. It was amazing. Liz, I've got that concert on a on a, um, a DVD, and I've watched it so many times. I've got it memorized. Wow, I, I am so, in a good way, jealous, but I'm so glad for you. Um, now Esther says her favorite uh, song is Country Roads. Yeah, I love to play this stuff for my kids when we're in the car, but uh, they're not real crazy about it. I think mine is uh, Rocky Mountain High. I love that song, amongst others. That's, that's, I've used that for my ringtone for a long time. Anyway, so now you all know that and the Rocky theme are my two phone ringtones. Um, the Rocky theme has a lot of meaning for different reasons, but one reason is that life is a fight and you got to keep fighting. And every time that phone goes off, it's like, got to keep fighting. Don't give up. <laughs> I know that sounds dumb to you guys, but uh, plus it was a song that we played in our high school jazz band all the time. And it just main, brings me back to my uh, really, really fond memories of, of um, jazz band in high school as well. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to see. I'm going to hit some of these questions real quickly. Susan. Okay. Suzanne says, my mother and I used to enjoy John Denver together. His voice was absolutely beautiful. Mom used to enjoy Sunshine. Oh, I love that one too. Sunshine on my shoulders. I actually did a parody on that song. I hope you don't mind, Suzanne. And we changed it to Cashmere on my shoulders. Makes me happy. <laughs> and so I changed the words to be a little more yarn centric, but um, I hope hopefully I didn't ruin it for anybody. We kept the same tune and the same tone and I just love that song. Um, yeah, Johnny says, yeah, he can wear the pullover when he's visiting family in New Jersey. Yes. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm just scrolling through some things, guys. I may miss some. Okay, Steph, welcome back. She says her phone died, so I had to switch to a tablet. Um, we have Claire Morley. says, hi, Bonnie from sunny Florida. Thank you so much for all your work. I'm excited to hear about the upcoming men's sweater. Also enjoy John Denver. What a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Yes. Oh, also, by the way, this men's sweater is not just a men's sweater. This would be a men's or woman's sweater. It's whatever you want. I'm going to try to write it in such a way that the dimensions will be for both, you know, for, you know, kind of like a, a unisex, you know, sweater. So, um, you know, either way. Um, and Swati says, I want to make the Fergus shrug from one of your books, but the yarn has been discontinued. Would appreciate your thoughts on a good substitute. Um, Swati, if you can email me on that, because I need to look up the Fergus Shrug and take a look at that again, because right now my, I'm, not, I'm not recalling it exactly. I think that might be... Well, anyway, if you could email me on that, I could maybe give you a better answer. Uh, yeah, Danya says, I have an order for the Tree of Life Afghan with the heavy yarn, but no flowers, just the leaves. I have different yarn to make a third one too. I would love for the whole afghan to just be trees. Well, you know, Danya, if you've got the, the stitch diagram, design it yourself and, and do it like that. Just make it trees. I think that would be amazing. Or even make the trees, you know, wider or bigger. Um, I, I would definitely take, take a stab at doing that. Um, <laughs> I love Loopy Crochet says she's making a roll tide bag. Good for you. All right, I'm just looking real quick. Um, looking, looking. Uh, Charlene says, um, the COVID has allowed me to do a lot of crocheting, but now I have to figure out what to do with it all. Oh, I, I know what you're saying, Charlene. Um, you know, Christmas is coming. Um, Hanukkah is coming. Birthdays, gifts, giveaways. Um, I know sometimes people do craft craft sales or maybe even an Etsy page might be a way to, I mean, I've thought about selling some of my designs on Etsy. I just um, haven't had the time to organize that. Um, not sure that would do well. I've tried it in the past and it didn't get much traffic, but um, that might be something you can try if you have some connections there. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to get back to, to the giveaway in just a second here, but I do have something to show you. Um, Rebecca says, I'm 56 and I know who John, okay, I, th I think you probably meant to type in John Denver. I'm sure 
I, I'm sure autocorrect changed that to John Deere. <laughs> um, never heard of Rick Schuler. I hadn't heard of Rick Schuler either until my daughter-in-law, um, uh, my, my son actually met them at a wedding in Arizona recently and he came home and said, mom, this guy looks like John Denver. He's wonderful. He sounds like John Denver and he had to cancel the 200 city tour. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And then I forgot about it. And then um, Christy emailed me a video link and I listened to the video and I was smitten from the, from the first bar of music, I promise you. So, I mean, this guy is good. If you guys are John Denver fans and want to look that up. Um, Nancy says, I plan to make the mandala with Hershinger's vintage heirloom. Ooh, I'll have to look that up. I'm not sure what that yarn is. I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I'm sure that'll be, be gorgeous. They have really pretty yarn. And we have Duty from Mississippi. We have Tanya with us and... Naomi, she says, aloha, everyone. I'm guessing she's in Hawaii. That would be cool to be in Hawaii. Um, okay, Suzanne says, I think Bonnie's beautiful designs are gorgeous, but beyond my current skill level, I look forward to advancing enough in my crochet to create some of those. Um, Suzanne, you know, take out some extra yarn, some some, uh, you know, extra yarn you don't have set aside for something and just do some swatches. That's what I would do. Go through the stitch videos on my channel, you know, individual, just learning the individual stitches and see what you think. I mean, that's what I, I tell folks all the time. It, they do look more complicated than they really are. Um, it does maybe take a, a little bit of learning, but and if you're not afraid of making mistakes, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Um, you know, give it a try. That's what I tell people. We have Barbara from Canada. We have Marley from sunny and windy South Dakota. Wow. Uh, what's way out there in the West there. I bet you guys get cold winters. I know you do. I've read those Little House on the Prairie books to my kids when they were little. I know how cold it gets. Took me took me years to get warmed up after reading The Long Winter. <laughs> if you've ever read that story, it's pretty amazing. Um, Thank you, Duty. She says, um, you'd be surprised the stuff that looks hard but isn't. Um, so I am going to say, okay, Suzanne says, do you have a starter recommendation? I might have to think about that one, Suzanne. Um, ha, Brad's mom says, SLR and separate light meter is the only way to go. I don't like point and shoot. Yeah. Although, at right this point, right now in time, my eyes are not that great. And, um, I mean, they're fine. I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord that I can see what I could see. But, you know, it's, um, I depend a lot on that, that setting now. Well, let me show you something. I've sat, I've gone on long enough here. Um, I want to show you, many of you have seen this before. This is the Listoon Varnish Shawl. That's going to be hard for me to show. And the way this works is this is a... A stole, a long stole portion, and the back. Let me have. To, I'm just going to stand up so you can see. Um, it's a stole with the back. Okay, this is kind of a, a back portion, and and we call these a sweater wrap, and it features. The low front ridge, the arrow, the woven stitch. Okay, so this is actually not too difficult and then has a little bit of lace at the bottom. And um, this design actually came out, I'm not gonna be wearing it too long because it's a little warm back here at the house. Um, this is called the Listoon Varnish Shawl and it came out in 2013 in Crochet World Magazine. And was inspired by my trip in 2012 that I took with my husband to Ireland. And we actually got caught in a little rainstorm and had to duck into a little cafe. And it was in Listoon Varna. So that's what this is named after. And um, so this is apparently was a very popular download with Annie's um, for many years. And it still is. And so um, the editor... Um, Jackie Daugherty asked me to restitch it in a different type of yarn, which I did. It was originally stitched in a DK weight, and um, I actually stitched it in a lighter weight worsted weight yarn. 
Um, and the yarn that I used was, oh, I don't remember the name of the yarn, uh, but it's in the magazine that I'm going to be giving away. I have three copies, three copies here. So if those of you, I know many of you may have already made this design before. So this is kind of a, a revisiting, kind of a, a restitch of that same design. And let me show you the, the model in here is really pretty. Um, let me know if I can get to it. Uh, and and this magazine this month let me let me show you I'll show you the magazine um, has a lot of really great stuff in it um, Jackie Doherty is just doing a bang-up job as editor and this is the design so it has this pattern and let me show you another and I also have an article in here this month on yarn substitutions and I go into great detail as to how I chose and why I chose the yarn that I chose and let's see the okay here it is the yarn that I ended up going with is called ultra alpaca I, I am such a sucker for alpaca I love alpaca but um, this is uh, actually a blend of wool and alpaca and the wool is really nice in that it helps to to stabilize the alpaca. Alpaca yarn is, is wonderfully soft and my favorite, but it's it tends to stretch out over time, kind of like cotton does. But combining it with wool kind of helps stabilizes it a little bit. So um, the pattern for, for this design is in this magazine. This is the October 2020 Crochet World. And um, where was I going to go with that? And the video tutorials for this are already on my channel. They have actually been some of the more popular uh, intermediate level videos. Um, so they're already there. So you can go ahead and you know, just look up Lis Dunvarna, L-I-S-D-O-O-N-V-A-R-N-A. -O -O I know it's a big word. Uh, or if you just go to my page and look up playlist and, and find the one that has shawls and ponchos and um, and wraps and it's listed as one of the designs all the videos are there ready to go um, there was a question that people have asked um, and that is concerning sizing this for like 3x and 4x and above um, and Jackie asked me to address that with you all and to be honest with you this this is a very long stole and as you saw how big it was in the back and I personally think that it would accommodate a variety of sizes um, and I, I really don't see a need um, even for you know size 4x to make this wider I mean because this is this is quite a bit you know of a wide back that can wrap around you if you you know if you are smaller than that and it feels really nice but um, the only thing that you could do if you wanted to make, let's say, if you wanted to make the, the stole wider, it'd be very easy. All you need to do is add extra rows of the woven stitch on both sides. That would be very easy to do. Now, if you did that, you would also have to, you would have to play with this down here and you'd have to adjust it some. But that, I think that would be fairly easy to work out. You know, if you're, if you're comfortable with playing around with that and um, not fearful of, you know, having uh, to play with the stitch count a little bit. I know some people are, they get real upset about that if it's not absolutely perfect. I mean, sometimes you have to just kind of, okay, I'm going to skip two instead of skipping one. I mean, if you're willing to play with the numbers a little bit on that, you could easily resize that just by adding um, to that the width of the stole. And you could even do that in the, you know, the back portion too. Just add extra rows of, of the woven stitch. And of course, you'd have to buy more yarn um, if you're going to do that. Um, and Shirley says, um, it's... She says it's easier to do your own patterns and come up with them. That's what she's doing right now. Good, good. Okay, I'm just looking, looking, see if there are any questions. Oh, that's great, Charlene. She says she finally found the song that explains how I feel in losing my husband. 
It is Comfort Me, Jealous of the Angels by Donna Taggart. I'll have to look that one up later, Charlene. Thank you for sharing that with others. Um, and Duty says, writing patterns is hard work. Amen to that. Yes, it is hard work. And and there are times when it's not perfect work. And you know, I'll be the first to say that I am I am far from a from being perfect, but we do work hard to try. And I try to make sure that if I can't, you know, explain it in writing, that I can explain it by doing, which is why I love doing the videos, just to try to clear up any ambiguity, you know, between what I mean and what people think I mean. So that, that you know, showing you something goes a lot further than telling you something, I, I think, personally, which is why I'm just so grateful for the technology that we have now. Um, Jan has a question. Do you have a pattern for a pocket shawl with some Celtic stitches? Yeah, Jan, the, the Duel and Delight, um, the Duel and Delight shawl, which is in the Contemporary Celtic Crochet book, is the, I think the only one that I have in print with pockets. But you know, you could probably take any of uh, the stoles that I have and then just look at the stitches and just make a small little square of the stitch. Um, and just, you know, stitch it on to the pocket if you, you know, onto each end if you wanted to. I don't think that would be too hard. Um, the Duel and Delight is definitely on the high intermediate end, which is why I'm hesitant to attempt it um, because I know a lot of people would not even be interested in the video. But um, I, I'm, I'm thinking about that in the back of my mind. I may have to do something. We'll see how, how, how this does um, in the magazine. Which, let's go ahead and give the magazines away. Okay, I have three numbers written down on my handy-dandy pad here. And I've already pre-decided so that you know I'm not being partial. Go in, now, I'm, I have three copies. And I'll tell you what the, the range is going to be in just a second. But let me just clarify that um, I can only ship the physical copy in the US right now, um, especially with the COVID-19 and all that. And it's prohibitively expensive for me to ship outside. And this, this comes out of my personal expenses. So that's why I'm like, you know, I'll, I'm willing to, you know, send it locally within the States, but I, I apologize. Okay, everybody's already got their numbers going. Okay, I'll tell you, I'm, I have three numbers. Um, just need to pick one of them between one and 20. Okay, the numbers are between one and 20 go and i'll see you guys know the drill i'm gonna have to change up the drill to just surprise you sometime okay let's see um la, da, 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 da. okay maria es espinoza is a winner number eight was one of the numbers mm, let's see Hold on a second. Things just jumped ahead of me here. I'm okay. Terry Redman is a winner. And Archer and Ace is a winner. So we have our winners. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me show you. See the numbers I had already. I don't know if you can even see that. Ah, you can't. There we go. I had already written them down ahead of time so that you know I'm not being partial. So if I called your name, so uh, let me say that again. Maria Espinoza and Terry Redman and Archer Nace. If the three of you could send me an email, I'll put the email in the chat right now. Okay, send me an email um, and tell me what your name is on YouTube as well because Sometimes the email does not match your your channel name on YouTube. Okay, so I will be sending them out. So all you need to do is, is send me an email. Tell me who you are the, of those three. And I need your mailing address. And just my disclaimer, I don't, I always say this, I don't keep these addresses. Um, I don't collect them for any devious purpose i don't even keep them for my newsletter if you want a newsletter you have to sign up yourself because i don't i don't spam people i'm not spam i am i don't do that um so, so anyway we will be i will be sending this out 
is if you contact me today, I will get these in this afternoon's mail, and they'll be leaving here from Conway, South Carolina, and um, get that. We'll get those out to you ASAP. Thank you so much for participating. Yay, I'm just so glad to see everybody in there. And look at you guys. You're already congratulating others who, even if you didn't win, you guys have such great, great attitudes. I love that. Um, it's such an example for me. Well, I have two things, three more things to do, and I'm going to zip through these, so I'm probably not going to be able to respond to anything online right there. I have two new um, beginner designs, or yeah, it's sort of beginner. I would call them easy designs, I guess. They're like a step above beginner, but I think a beginner can do these. This is going to be coming out in three weeks. Okay, so the next two weeks are going to be the Celtic Mandala throw on my channel. So week one and then week two will be those two videos. After that, I've got some beginning stuff coming. And this is what I'm really, really excited about. Look at the colors in this. Can you believe this? This is crazy, okay? Um, this is a new way to, it's a different way to do ripple. That includes these puff stitches. And um, I just saw this yarn at Walmart. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And I, I wonder how it would look with this. And I think it came out pretty, it's, it's a little on the crazy side for what I do, but I'm calling this the easy wild and wavy baby blanket because it is pretty wild. Um, I think this would also look great with, um, like alternating two or three colors of your choice. Like and if you have um, acrylic yarn in your yarn stash, this would look really good. But I just love the way the puff stitch looks. And um, the thing that I thought about this too is uh, from an infant's perspective, from a baby's perspective, these are the kind of things that really do engage a baby. I know it might not be the prettiest thing to give at a baby shower. I know we like the frilly things, but you know, as far as mind, brain development, eye development and stuff, um, just studying all these colors for a baby would be so much fun and I think you know very engaging for them. I still have memories of studying a quilt. It was a patch quilt when I was a child and um, it was a gift to my mom for me and I still have it. It's in it's absolute in tatters right now but I did not want to ever get rid of it because I had these little little patches of, of fabric that none of it made any sense. Um, but I still remember the little antique cars on it and, and little things that just, um, I studied it a lot as a kid. I, I just think that this is one of those projects. And it works up really well. It takes two scans of the yarn and I'll have all that information coming. And um, this is another very easy shawl or scarf. I mean, you can easily use it as a wrap or as a shawl. And um, give me a little bit closer. And it's, it's, it's just straight fabric. Okay. And this is using the waddle stitch. Using an asymmetrical style scarf. But it actually comes out to a, to a nice triangle. Um, and this is actually an easy pattern. So I'm, I'm dubbing this an easy pattern. And this actually could be a great stash buster for your sock weight yarn that you might have in your stash. Or... Uh, number two weight, you can use any weight yarn really. Um, I think if you use worsted, it would be super chunky, but um, uh, I, I really highly recommend a sock weight yarn for this. And that's, that's what I use. I use some uh, designer yarn that I purchased from a friend years ago. And um, there's no cables, nothing fancy about it, but I think it's something that could go with it, you know, go well in the winter time with a dark, you know, a dark uh, shirt underneath. Um, now, if you wanted to use just a different color stripe um, for whatever you have in your stash or even vary the shape, you know, the size of the stripes, you know, that'd be very easy to do. It's just a simple repeat, a simple two, um, two row repeat once you get going. And um, I have the video coming for that in about four weeks. So just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview. And we have one more thing. Ah, I'm just rushing, rushing, rushing. Um, and just to let you know, I do look at these videos later on. I forgot to open this. And listen, it's, it's rattling. I have no idea what's in here. This, for those of you who don't know, is a knit crate. And every, it's, it's a monthly yarn subscription. It's $24.99 a month. But generally, the contents are valued as much more than that. I would say probably at least double that if you're 
you're going to buy them in a store. But I highly recommend, though, if you get a chance, to, once the pandemic eases, um, I, I know a lot of the, um, the yarn stores do need our support, and I definitely encourage you, those, those of you who like to go to, sh who have a store that you like in your area, please, please support them. Um, I was in touch with my friend from So Original, and if you want to check out her store, it's the uh, name is just So, S-O, an original. It's in Maryland, and um, she's she's not she's struggling right now. I mean, I'm really hoping and praying that she will be able to um, at least make 50% of her rent. Yes, it's that bad out there, um, and we really need stores like that. That's how I've learned a lot. But anyway, for those of you who don't have places like that, there are there is other there are other ways. Woo, a buying yarn. Wow, look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at the color on this. Whew. There's some other goodies in here too, but let me show you. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is hand dyed yarn. I can tell just by the look of it. And I definitely like the purple. Let's see what this is. This is Euro yarn. It's by Knit Crate. It's called Cotton Basics. Oh, wow. This is 100% Pima cotton, DK weight. Each of these is 266 yards or 240 meter or 100 gram. This is machine wash, gentle cycle, lay flat to dry. Wow, that is beautiful. So do my math in my head if I can. So 12, I can't think right now, but that's, yeah, it's over 500 yards of yarn of DK weight, and that is gorgeous. That could easily, I think, make a, a nice shawl. And let's see what else is included. What was rattling in here? Oh, wow, look at this. Anybody know what this is? This is a Tunisian, what they used to call the Afghan stitch years ago. This is a Tunisian crochet hook. It's, it's kind of like a method of and it's a size J or 6.00 millimeter, and it feels like it's a nice, nice wood hook. But um, uh, Tunisian, I don't really do a lot. I don't do much Tunisian at all. But uh, my friend, if you're interested in Tunisian crochet, there's a great book called, uh, I forget the name of it, but it's by Brenda Borg, B-O-U-R-G. So if you look up Brenda Borg, um, I did do a, a book review on her book many years ago. And... They're back to their booklets now. Um, for a time, a couple of their boxes did not include the booklets because of the, of course, COVID-19. So it looks like they featured a nice, beautiful, um, let's see. And these are some of the other colors. I got purple and other boxes may have these other colors. Um, one is called Energize Me. The one I got is called Chill Out. And then the other color is called Pavement. They also have other yarns. I won't get into all that, but um, the patterns. Okay. Here are some of the patterns. They usually have one that that is cro for crochet and then others that are knit. So it looks like this is a knit shawl, which looks really, really pretty. And then you can also crochet one like on the front cover and you have enough yarn they send you to complete the project which is really cool I definitely like the knit one I think I may have to knit this one because I definitely want to continue to, to grow my knitting skills and this is really cool too they have some stitch diagrams in the patterns for those of you who like the stitch diagrams and then they also have uh, patterns for socks and other things that go with their other um, other crates because they have sock yarns and they have other specialty yarn crates that you can get instead of this. This is just the basic, but I love the basic to be honest with you. And it's just so much fun to get yarn and you don't know what it is and somebody else has kind of picked it out and there's just something fun about that. It's really gotten me out of my comfort zone and you know trying new new colors and I've really really enjoyed that. Well, let me take one more quick look because I have gone way over time today. Um, Joe Roxana is asking, have you ever completed a Tunisian project? 
I have completed a Tunisian project. Um, I don't know if I just made the wrong yarn, yarn choice, but I, I chose a, a, a yarn that was a cotton acrylic blend. The cotton was fine. It's just a, I find it uh, personally, um, there are so many other people that are so much better at the Tunisian than I will ever be. I think to do Tunisian, I think you really have to have a passion for that particular craft. And to be honest, I don't have the passion for Tunisian crochet. Um, especially since I've learned to knit. I, I really enjoy the crochet fabric and I really enjoy the knit fabric and I feel like learning to knit has just demystified that whole craft for me. I can look at things now and say I know how that was done simply because I know the very basics of knitting. Um, and I'm just again thankful to Lana who is the so original store owner who taught me how to knit and she taught me very quickly and it was a very easy transition. Um, I, I have very little interest in actually learning Tunisian. Um, I have tried it some. I find that the fabric is, is just a bit clunky for me. Um, but now I have a friend who, who is in Canada. Her name is Sandy, Sandy Walker. I, I may be getting her mixed up. But um, she, she has designed incredible Tunisian um, cable patterns and everything. So if you're into interested in pursuing Tunisian, I would highly recommend you find someone who's excited about that, and who's good at it, who can teach you how to do it right. Um, I believe Sandy Walker can do that. She, she is really, really good and has designed some spectacular work using Tunisian. So I am just going to bow out on that. You know, I might do some techniques, but, um, I, I just, again, I prefer the knit, um, instead and that's kind of what I'm going to be developing um, in my in my personal you know life um, as far as that goes um, and Mary says she enjoys entrelac Tunisian crochet that is great and, and and by what I just said I'm not trying to discourage anybody from giving it a go I mean some of you are you know you guys do things uh, painting and you know portraits and all kinds of beautiful other crafts sewing quilting and things like that that I, I just know that I do not gravitate towards that and I'm okay with that, but I, I still, that doesn't keep me from admiring all these other crafts. I, I love to look at beautiful needle points and, and love, of course, I'm going to quilt shows and things like that, but I know personally, I will not, I am not going there. I'm too content where I am in my crochet world and dabbling a little bit in knit right now. So I am totally content. I'm not going to get into yarn spinning or any of that. I know my hands will not last that long. So um, I'm just, you know, life is too short to spend it doing something you're not that good at. So I'm enjoying doing what I'm doing. Um, Brass Mom says, I do knitting, crocheting, and pin loom weaving. I do some Tunisian crochet as well. I enjoy learning lots of new techniques. And that's great. And, and yes, I did complete something. I did learn the technique. I should probably give it another go. Um, with better yarn, maybe with um, wool, but you know, right now I'm I'm really content, you know, learning what I'm learning with knit. Um, Brad's mom says I don't know how to sew or even use a sewing machine, but I can do simple embroidery and or cross stitch. Yeah, not too much of that. My eyes are old. I I understand. You know, I think I think you're we should be free to do what we enjoy the most. Okay, guys, it's getting close to going time, going home time here for the week. So. I wanted to read you just something. Um, this is just something on the light side, but um, I wanted to read to you. This is a hymn, and this is actually the hymn that Roger and I are coming out with this weekend on the Sapphire Freeway channel, so don't forget to, to subscribe to that channel and hit notifications so that you get the notification. Like I said, the channel's in its infancy, and um, we're just trying to grow it to a you know, place where it can bless more folks. And it's just a great outlet for us, um, musically speaking. Um, so these words were written by a, a man named Joachim Neander um, sometime in the 1600s. So this was written a long time ago. And it's, the name of the hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. So I just wanted to read the four stanzas because sometimes when you hear the words um, not being sung, it just it can take on a different meaning and, and these 
uh, as I record these songs, they've been these words have been rattling through my head and, and it's sometimes really getting me through some some tough days. And the words are, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, who over all things so wonderfully reigneth. Shieldeth thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen how thy desires have been granted in what he ordaineth? Praise to the Lord, who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, if with his love he befriend thee. Hmm. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly forever adore him. Amen. I hope that blesses you. Um, this past Sunday, I was actually able to attend a worship service in person, a very small service spread out far and wide in this very, you know, in a, in a, in a large room. And um, man, that was amazing. It's, it's been since, I um, can't remember when, February or March that I actually gathered with a, a church in person. And, and that was just, I mean, it was just a, a normal, small, we sang hymns, quiet service, but it just, I just drank it in and it was great. Well, I'm going to head on out. My family is in town and we are going to go visit some more family today, um, being very careful, of course. And um, I just wanted to let you all know I love you and care for you and, and so looking forward to seeing you next Friday. Can't get here fast enough. God bless. Bye-bye.